The NSCL, the National Superconducting Cyclotron Laboratory, is a world-leading facility for rare isotope research and nuclear science education. The heart of the laboratory is the coupled cyclotron facility where we accelerate heavy ions to roughly half the speed of light. Uh, these ions bombard then a target where the ions break up into a variety of different rare isotopes and we have a fragment separator, the A1900 fragment separator, which selects then these ions and transports them to a variety of different experimental stations where we study these rare isotopes. MONA, the Modular Newton Array, is a collaboration of scientists from Michigan State University, Florida State University, and eight predominantly undergraduate institutions across the country. In 2000, at an NSCL users group meeting, in a small breakout session, we were discussing future opportunities or future possibilities to detect fast neutrons efficiently at the NSCL. And one option was plastic scintillation detectors. Jim Brown, who is now at Wabash College, came up with the idea and said, this is something that undergraduate students can contribute to and they can actually build those detectors. And we picked up on this idea. And in 2001, we submitted a proposal to the National Science Foundation and the proposals of the collaborating institutions were then approved in the summer of 2001. The array consists of 144 plastic scintillator detectors. Each detector is a two meter long bar, uh, 10 centimeters deep and 10 centimeters tall. We arrange these bars into nine layers of 16 bars high and the goal of this detector is to measure fast neutrons that are created in reactions with very neutron-rich isotopes produced here at the NSCL. They're basically a large position-sensitive array that detects the scattering of a neutron both in position and time in three-dimensional space. So any particular bar that fires uh, by an interaction of a neutron records what through the electronics and the computers that control the array can record the precise position where that neutron is scattered and thus uh, measure its energy and its position very carefully. The main benefit to the undergraduate students in the collaboration was during the construction phase. It was really beneficial that the students could construct the detectors at their home institutions during the semester and after they finished the construction they could keep the detectors for anywhere between three and six months and when they were done they drove the detectors up here to the lab where they participated in the installation of the whole array. During the summer, we, we moved uh, the whole detector and all of the cables and everything from one vault to the next, and that was quite an experience. Uh, they were working above us, so we had to have hard hats on, and, and we were carrying each bar individually. It took three person per bar, so we could open up the doors and have two people carry. And that was, that was a lot of fun, trying to figure out how to set it up and make sure everything's aligned right, and moving each part. <laughs> Now that the array is finished, the undergraduates participate in the actual experiments and that can be of course difficult when the experiments are scheduled in the middle of a semester. So we set up a video conferencing system at our data taking stations so that the students can actually take part in the experiment remotely. In addition, we have weekly video conferencing where we discuss the analysis uh, of previous experiments that the undergraduates are involved in. In addition to the experiments with the coupled cyclotron facility where MONA is used to measure fast neutrons, MONA is also an excellent detector for cosmic rays. So what we do is we leave MONA running all the time and the cosmic rays that are detected by MONA are then used by the students offline uh, and this feature is mostly used by Warren Rogers from Westmont College. Here our interest is in finding the kinds of fluctuations and trends that occur in the cosmic ray distribution uh, both from Michigan State and Santa Barbara simultaneously. So we can look at uh, long-range correlations between the flux activity in Michigan and California by using these two arrays and then comparing the data that they receive. Um, so we've also developed a set of algorithms, my students did, I should say, developed a set of algorithms that allows MONA to be used as a large wide-angle camera for muon flux. And so both sites can be active at the same time and uh, therefore make measurements that, again, uh, you would not normally be able to make at an undergraduate institution. We are currently working on an upgrade of MONA, where Andreas Schiller from Ohio University is leading the effort to construct six more, six additional layers of MONA. 
And this will enhance the capability to detect higher excitation energies of nuclei and uh, bro broaden out the range of experiments that we can do with MONA. This brings in, in addition to Ohio University, uh, two new universities. One is Ohio Wesleyan, Bob Kay is the PI on this, and Sharon Stevenson from Gettysburg College. One of the valuable aspects of being a member of this collaboration is that each of us at the various undergraduate schools can involve the undergraduate students uh, in some very meaningful experiments. You know, we've learned in science that one of the best ways to teach science is to have students actually conduct the science, to, in other words, to get personally involved in doing the science. One of the ways we do that is uh, we design laboratories that help teach the concepts of physics, but honestly, the, the best way for a student to grasp what science is really about is to take part in actual science with real scientists. And one of the really valuable aspects of this collaboration is that undergraduate students have the opportunity to work at a, a world-class facility, uh, an acceleration facility that does cutting-edge research in exotic nuclei, neutron-rich nuclei, and uh, get to work with real physicists day by day. Uh, they get to be involved in the actual acquisition of data. They're involved in the analysis of that data, in the calibration of the array. They're involved in uh, working physically with the array to change the configuration, uh, to set up electronics, to run computer programs. I mean, it's an incredibly rich educational experience. And for me personally, um, I have very much uh, uh, benefited and, and uh, enjoyed this collaboration because my students have been able to uh, be participating in ways that are, are not often available at undergraduate schools. My interest in physics um, was there, but being involved in research is really something that helped me to figure out that that's really what I want to do, for even for a major. And um, also, uh, being interested in research, I know kind of where I might want to be headed into a field that does involve some research. And just being around people who are in the profession, it's uh, helped to, to help me to understand where I want to go and how things work. My involvement with the Mona collaboration as an undergraduate student uh, gave me a small glimpse into the workings of a big national laboratory and actually inspired me to pursue a PhD in nuclear physics uh, from MSU and I have no doubt in my mind that my involvement and the work that I did and the network that I formed with professors and students and graduate students uh, really helped me in getting into grad school here at MSU. It is actually an absolute pleasure to work with the students uh, for the last few years. Um, to see how they get involved and get excited about the research that research they're doing here and I certainly hope that this will continue for quite some time in the future. NSCL is a world-leading laboratory for rare isotope research and nuclear science education. Operation of NSCL as a national user facility is supported by the Experimental Nuclear Physics Program of the National Science Foundation.